Hello, welcome to ShropshireStyle.com. My name is Johnny Drury and I'm here with Ollie Westbury, Salop correspondent at the Montgomery Waters Meadow as we bring you our season reviews of Salop's campaign, a real season of progression for Salop. They finished 12th in the league and we're going to be looking at all the uh, the different positions and we're going to start, Ollie, with the uh, with the goalkeepers. Now, Shrewsbury have, in the past, had sort of loanees that have come in, but the last couple of years it's been Marco Morosi and he's had another really, really exceptional campaign. Yeah, he was good, Marco was. He's had a very good season. Um, you know, in between the posts, I think he missed a couple of games early on in the season when he, when he damaged, I think, a finger it was. Um, but he's been, he's been, yeah, it, it's been a really good season for Morosi in between the posts for town. He's, he's kind of, he's, he's probably, he's, his shot stopping is something that is a real strength of his. And there are certain games where he's made a couple of really, really magnificent stops. I can remember one at Bolton where. Um, he said to me a couple of days after it that the, the, the shot that he stopped with his ear almost took his ear off. Um, so no, I Marco's, bet that hurt as yeah, well I, bet it, I bet it did. Yeah. I bet it did. Uh, <laughs> but he's made some really, really exceptional saves. Um, and you know, since joining, I think it was Coventry he joined from. He's got one more year left here. Um, yeah, he will be really, really happy with his season's work for sure. His backup is is Harry Burgoyne. I know he's played a handful of games this season when Morosi was was injured. But what we hear about Harry Burgoyne is his sort of his impact around the place. Sort of loves the club. I know he's sort of local lad as well, and and he sort of seems to be sort of a really good foil for for Morosi. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. As far as I mean, we haven't seen much of him in in in, in a way of you know um, actual performances on the pitch, obviously because he he very much plays second fiddle to to Marco. But what we gather. Is that he's you know an exceptional presence around the ground, around the dressing room, uh, in the community as well. Um, I think he does a lot of work in the community. Uh, we we know obviously with our relationship with the media guys at the club that they speak incredibly highly of him. Um, so there are that there are those aspects, and also he's just he seems to be such a such a real team person. Um, I think that I can't was it Forest Green when Ryan Bowman scored a 98th minute winner. And he was kind of the first player there, like jumping on his back down here, right by us here in the touchline, um, uh, which kind of shows you that, you know, he's team first. And th those are the kind of people you need because, unfortunately, you're going to have a squad of 20 to 25 or however many you have. Not everyone can play every week. So you need to make sure that people are buying into the vision, buying into, I suppose, the project that, that the manager's trying to create. And, and yeah, it, it, he's the presence in the dressing room, I think he's, he's one of those that's really greatly appreciated. Absolutely, and just to, just finally behind that, you've got youngsters coming through, Jaden Bevan and, and, and Xander Park, who, who, who have spoken really highly of. And, 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 yes, yeah, potentially. I mean, I'm not comment on because obviously they're not featured um, at all. Uh, but it's, it's difficult to form an opinion on them, obviously, without seeing them play. So, But yes, from what you gather, that they're, they're quite highly regarded.